Hello, in this video we're going to talk about how we can be respectful web scrapers. Um, it's very easy when we're writing a program to kind of hit a, a website too hard. And maybe if the owners are okay with it, uh, and kind of in general, maybe it's, well, there's some limit at which point it brings down the server. And, um, and so there's ways that web servers can uh, tell us to, hey, back off, you're sending us too much traffic. And, and so what I want to do here is think about how we can uh, build that feature. I'm going to start on the Flask side, then we'll see what it looks like um, kind of when we're visiting the web page. Okay, so over here I have the same example from last time. Uh, I'm actually going to simplify it a little bit. Um, maybe for this page, I'm just going to return. Uh, maybe I'll return the word home. And then for this ha page, uh, I'll return the string ha ha, like so. And, um, and then over here, I'm going to start it like usual. I'm going to say python3 server.py is the name of the file I'm running. And, uh, and then what I'd like to do is I'm going to grab my IP address. And I see that I'm listening on port 5000. I'm going to type this and then say 5 colon 5000. And I have that page. And I have the other page. And that all looks good. Now, one of the things I want to look at inside of this web browser are what we call the Chrome development tool. So if I, if I go to the menu, I go to more tools, um, I can click on developer tools, and, uh, and there's maybe something similar in any browser. And, uh, and when I refresh this, what it's trying to show me down in this box here are all the web requests that are involved in, in visiting this page. And if you go and visit a real page, you might see dozens of requests there because loading the page involves images and JavaScript files and other things. And, um, and so if I click on this thing, maybe make this a little bit larger, I mean, there's a few pieces here. Um, one is that I actually have the response, right? I can see the, I can see the data there for the response. And, uh, and that's the data that I'm getting back, but there's also uh, this stuff called metadata. And the metadata is just a little bit of extra information about what I'm getting. Um, so for example, uh, there are these response headers that come along uh, with the response. And that tells me things like, well, how long is the data? Um, what kind of file uh, is it? Um, here I typed out HTML at the end. Um, so you might guess it's an HTML file, uh, but that's just kind of a convention. I mean, I could have something that ends in .html and then it ends up being a, a PDF, right? This content type here is how Chrome actually figures out what kind of data it is. Um, you can also see there's a little bit of information there about the encoding. Um, and there's some other details about, I don't know, the date the page was modified, stuff like that, uh, what server we're using. And, um, and, and so I have all that. The other thing I can see is that this was a good page, right? I got back uh, status code um, 200. And so where all is all this stuff coming from? Well, it, it turns out over here in my code, even though I'm just returning a string, um, this is a shorthand. And it's the shorthand for returning a, a response object. It's kind of strange, right? So within the Flask module, we have lowercase request, and then there's also this uppercase response. And, uh, and we have these response objects. And, and what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of returning a string, but that's the equivalent of saying, return a new response object where I have home for that information. And, uh, and then I have like a status, which I guess is 200. And, uh, and then I have uh, headers equals this empty dictionary. Um, when, when I'm kind of looking at these header values over here, uh, I think of like content length as a key and then four as a value. I think content of, of content type is a key and then this stuff, stuff is a value. And, and so there's some that it's trading automatically and, uh, and I have the option of putting more in if I like. Right, so this line of code here is really just kind of equivalent uh, to this, right? So, so that's kind of cool. Um, well, what it means is I could put extra information in here um, if I wanted to. So for example, um, maybe I'll create another page uh, that's like, um, you know, don't do not visit. And, uh, and maybe what I'll return here is something like, you know, go away, and the status code will be like 404, right? That's kind of what we get uh, for a missing um, uh, page. And, and then if I want, I could put whatever I really want in here. I could put something like, um, you know, some key uh, goes to some, some value. It doesn't really matter. I can shove anything in there I want. And then if I restart my web server, control C and then run it again. And um, 
it's complaining, right? Uh, because I have two endpoints both named home. Um, so let me, uh, I'm just trying to change the name of that function and then I think it'll be happy. And, and so I'm gonna do that. And then in this page, I am going to go to all of this slash do not visit. And, um, and, and you can see here while I get the text like before, maybe, let me shrink this down just a little bit. But I get the, the text to go away uh, like that. Um, if I click on under network, if I click on this thing, I can see that it was a 404 response. And then if I come down to these response headers down here, I can see that for the headers, there's this extra key and this extra value. So I have some key and, uh, and some value there. And, um, and so I, I still get the data, right? I mean, this is the data. But then I kind of have all this uh, metadata, both the status and um, and all of these headers. So in general, right, even though I'm returning a string, you know, Flask will create a response object if I'm not doing it explicitly. Um, so why would we ever want to do it explicitly? Uh, well, it turns out there's a lot of things we could do with the status and, um, and and kind of these headers. And um, and for example, if you if you kind of Google all the different HTTP uh, response codes, I only know a couple of them. Um, one of the ones you're going to see that's important is 429, and that says too many requests. And this is what a web server should send back um, if it's kind of getting hit too heavily by a specific, um, let's say, web scraper. And uh, and so that's okay, 429, too many requests. If I scroll down a little bit, I see that there's also this optional header, which says retry after, and that's in seconds. And, um, and so that's kind of a polite way to tell a web scraper that hey, I'm busy right now, you've been sending me too many requests, but wait a bit and then I'll be okay with some more requests, okay? So let, let's try to do this. I, I'm gonna say, so 4, 2, 20, 429 is the number. So, so here I'm gonna say 429. And, uh, and then down here, what, what is my key? I guess my key is this thing, retry after. And and I'll say, well, I want you to retry after, I don't know, three seconds. Maybe I'll try that. Okay, let, let me restart this web server and hit that. And um, and then let me let me kind of refresh this page. You can see it's, uh, it's kind of saying the same thing. If I click on this, well, I'm getting that 420, 429, too many requests, and retry after three seconds. Okay. So what I'd like to do here, kind of big picture, is to have something like this, but I want it to work across all my different functions, okay? And, and so kind of what I'm trying to do is I want to have a new uh, decorator that will do these response objects if I'm getting too, hit too heavily. So, so how can I do that? So um, maybe, uh, what is this thing called here? It's too many. So maybe I'll say define too many, and uh, and you know it's just kind of a general function, and so I'm going to use this as a decorator, right? I'm going to be doing something like this. I'm going to say something like at too many, and uh, and maybe here I'm just going to say like you know let's return uh, high for now, but I'm going to use this decorator. So hopefully it, it kind of sends that, and and so this is going to have to take a function. And then it's going to have to return a different function. And, um, and so maybe what I should do here is I should create some sort of wrapper. Right? I'm going to say def wrapper. And, um, and, and I'm wrapping something that doesn't really take any arguments. So I guess that'll be fine just like so. Um, I'm going to call this thing. Maybe I'll say like rv equals that. You know what? I think it's fine to even just try to return whatever that thing returns. And then I'm going to return this wrapper here. Right, right, so what will happen is that this function is going to get swapped out for this wrapper, which basically does the same thing. And, and then up here, what I'm going to do is sometimes I'm going to return a response object that will say, um, you know, go away. Um, and the status will equal 429. And then I'll say something like, you know, headers equals retry after let's say like three seconds. Okay, so, so let's let's try this and see if I can kind of get this behavior. Um, so I'm gonna run this thing. And, and of course, right, you know, to do 
only sometimes do this, right? I don't always want to tell people to go away, just kind of when I'm too busy. All right, so I'm going to run this, and then I'm going to refresh this page, and, and you see it works beautifully. I'm doing the same thing um, that I had before. Um, what if I want to have it apply to all my pages, right? So let's say I want to have it be for this one. Um, what I can do is I can, I can put it here for the other ones as well. Um, this is kind of weird, right, when I'm having multiple decorators because each one has a chance to kind of swap out uh, the function and it works from the inside out. So I kind of, this is the original one and this has a shot to swap out or register it. And then this has a, a shot to kind of um, swap out or register it. So it's important that I'm putting this directly before uh, I have this. Otherwise, this would just kind of bypass and jump straight to the page. So I have this thing and, uh, and I'm going to kind of run it again. And you see this issue I'm hitting, right, is that it says view function mapping is overwriting existing endpoint, which is wrapper. Uh, well, what's going on here? Well, each of these are swapping out each of these functions with a new function that's called wrapper, right? And, and, and Flask does not like that, right? Flask likes each endpoint to go to a different function. And, um, and so one of the things I'm going to have to do here that's a little bit tricky is when I return this wrapper function, I have to give it a new name. I have to say something like wrapper dot name equals, and I can make up whatever I want, but I think I'm just gonna steal the name from the function that I'm wrapping, just kind of like that. So I'm gonna run this now, and, uh, and now cool. So I, I get that on the home page. I get this on hot.html. I'm getting it on all the pages, right? And, and so that's all good. Um. Let's work on this to do, right? Uh, you know, let's try to think about how we can only do it if we haven't had a request for a while. So you can see I'm, I'm already importing time. And, and so I'm gonna have something here called like last time. Uh, maybe I'll just start it off at zero. And, uh, and, and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna figure out, well, uh, what is the current time? Equals time dot time, right? This is the seconds since 1970. And then I'm gonna figure out how many seconds have passed. So I'm gonna say elapsed equals cur time minus the last time, right? So this is how many seconds it's been since this thing was updated. And then I'm gonna update, I'm gonna say last time equals cur time, okay? So what this is elapsed thing is gonna do is, is it's gonna be telling me, well, how long has it been since some other page was requested. And, and so what I'll say is, you know, if you've already asked for one page within the last three seconds, you're just gonna have to wait. So I'm gonna say if elapsed is, is kind of less than three, so, so you've kind of asked recently, uh, I, I'm gonna do this. And, and maybe just to be kind of nice, um, I'm not gonna count it as a new request with this last time. Uh, unless I actually kind of gave you something. So I'm gonna put this down here, right? It doesn't reset the clock of when you last um, asked for something unless we're actually giving you something. Okay, so let me let me kind of refresh this. I'm gonna come back here and, and well, that's horrible. Um, let me kind of see, I have some sort of, well, it's not running. <laughs> okay, I run it, I'm gonna refresh this page and still, still no go. A local variable last time referenced before assignment. Oh yeah, because I guess this is kind of a global variable and uh, and I'm making it a local variable here. Let me just do this. I'm gonna say global last time like this and uh, and restart this thing. And then I'm gonna refresh it and it says, haha. You see, I, I refresh again and it says go away. If I keep hitting refresh, it only lets me really kind of get my data once every three seconds. And that's true even if I jump to a different page, right? And, uh, and and so I can kind of use this for all of them. This is a way to do what we call rate limiting, right? I kind of limit how many requests I'll take. And I guess now it's very slow. Like I get one request every three seconds. Um, now I'm going to leave it here, but with kind of one to do. I mean, it, it's not very fair that I would refuse one client service just because another client recently kind of sent me a bunch of traffic. So to really do this properly, uh, keep track of 
um, of kind of you know last time on a per client basis and, and there's different ways i could do that um i think like you know in, in flask i can get the ip address of the computer that's sending me the traffic and, and then i could kind of to make it fair i could say well um, I'm only going to kind of send you away if, if I've been getting a lot of requests from the same uh, IP address for a while. 